Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Do you feel that in the role that you're in right now, do you support self-identification? Yes, yes I do. And in understanding that, if you were to have a group of males of Caucasian or any skin color mm -hmm. who identified as a woman of color, would you describe that room as being a diverse room? I can't even wrap my mind around that. I don't have an answer for that. But that is actually what your department is about, is uh, understanding diversity and equity yeah. and inclusion, correct? Yes. So again, I ask my question. You believe in self-identification. If a group of males, Caucasian or any skin color, identifies as a woman of color, do you see that as a diverse room? I do not believe that they would have to identify as a woman of color for it to be a diverse room. They I could have absolutely a, agree a with that. Visible disability. They, I, yes. So then, to go follow up on that, is diversity defined by race and gender, or by experience and ideology? It's ex it's defined by many many things. The executive order is a much broader definition than simply the classes that are protected under U.S. law. So we would start with the law but it is much broader than that. You see, you said that the Foreign Service Officers Test, one of the things that our process does not do is test for racist or sexist or homophobes or ableist. Those are the things that we need to be screening for. But let me be clear. Mm -hmm. I agree there shouldn't be any hateful people in the ranks of our State Department, our mm -hmm. diplomatic services, or in government as a whole. Okay. I would strive to say that our endeavor would be to not have that anywhere in America. Yeah. But what I would say, however, and critically, is I think I speak for many Americans who have a good reason to believe that the State Department has a deeply misguided belief that hate is labeled and applied to anyone who has a disagreement in their ideology or the political affiliations. And see, just to be clear on that point, the differences in opinion or belief is not racist or sexist or ableist or any other type of labeling. And what you see is, is that when an individual disagrees, whether it be on his political opinions or things like this, he's immediately labeled based on his skin color that he is to have, as my colleague was pointing out, white privilege, right? And that is the uh, immediate assumption. Hmm. So I, I want to know, because you've talked about the fact that, and this is your quote, that we hire based on merit. Mm -hmm. If it's hired on merit, then why would we even need an office to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion if we're hiring by those who are most qualified? The issue is access and inclusion and... But access is granted by merit, correct? Access? You no. submit your application no, you, and if no. you're the most qualified, then no, sir. you should have it basically. But, but that's what we're looking towards, right? The idea of merit being the defining factor. When I say access, for instance, one of the things that Congress has helped us do is pay our interns. I could not afford to be an intern at the Department of State. I come from Ohio, I had to work. So access- And I completely get that as well, ma'am. Okay, I came so from let's a broken talk. family who, okay. my mother and father, my dad spent 30 years in prison, my mom spent seven years in prison. I bounced house to house until I was raised and finally adopted by grandparents after sleeping on couches of house neighbors and things like this. And he was a welder, my grandmother did hair as a beautician. Mm -hmm. We came from a below the average line okay. of, of economics, which guess what? I sit here as a United States congressman, of which 11,500 on average is done in our entire history, mm -hmm. not based on diversity, equity, and inclusion, but on the ideas that equal opportunity exists thanks to America and the things that we fight for. I, I want to ask, what is the definition and difference between equity mm -hmm. and equality? There are many wonderful examples of how to describe the difference between the two. Equality is that you each are in a place and you get a ball with a target ahead of you. Equity is if you are smaller, weaker, you might be placed closer to the target. See, I can answer that really quickly. My opinion mm -hmm. of the difference between equity and equality is equity is about equal outcome no. and equality is about equal opportunity. And that the bottom line is, is that I would love to find out in my last few seconds how mm -hmm. DEIA helps us win strategic competition 
when it comes to China or push back on Russia's illegal war in Ukraine or prevents nuclear Iran, you know, can you name one meaningful contribution that DEI efforts would make towards those priorities? And with that, I'll yield back to you, Mr. Chair. May I answer or? Yes, ma'am, you may. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, to have a wider array of experiences at the table as we grapple with these problems is going to help us come up with a wider array of options to address them. If you have the same people sitting at the table with similar backgrounds, similar experiences, you are going to have a very narrow range of options. That is why we're trying to broaden the aperture in that fashion. That is our belief. And as I said, I think this rich discussion today makes my point very, very well. Thank you. Chair, now recognize